Hello, everybody. We are super excited to see you and welcome you to our EOP new admit webinar for 2020. My name is Yuki Burton. I will be one of your co-hosts for today, and I currently serve as the assistant director in the Educational Opportunity Program. And hello, everyone. My name is Ruben. Uh, he, they pronouns. I am the director of strategic equity initiatives for the Division of Equity and Inclusion. I have the honor and gift of co-hosting with my sister, Yuki. Yes, so uh, a lot of you have received our messages and invitations and you're excited to know that you're a part of the EOP family. But the follow up question then is, well, what is EOP? What does that mean? How do I get connected with y'all? So in today's webinar, we're gonna overview our comprehensive resources and make it clear to you how you can connect with us in your transition to UC Berkeley. We do wanna make sure you are clear about the EOP eligibility criteria. So if you received a welcome message from us, that means that you identify as any one of the three following. So either a first generation, meaning the first in your family to pursue a four-year degree, low-income student, or a historically unrepresented student. And it's important to note that the EOP definition can vary by different campuses. Again, at Berkeley, if you're any one of those three, you're automatically a part of our family. And we're happy to share that EOP students make up over 40% of the undergraduate population at Berkeley. That's over 12,000 students. So I know right now with all of us sheltering in place, you can feel alone in this journey, but we really wanna make it clear to you that you're not, that you have a vibrant family that extends beyond this computer screen too. So I'll pass it back over to Ruben. Thank you for that, Yuki. And you know, I wanna make sure that we, that we get something uh, addressed, which is oftentimes many of us, because of the backgrounds and communities that we come from, uh, we may experience something that is called uh, imposter syndrome. Uh, and imposter syndrome is what makes us believe that we don't belong or that somebody made a mistake. So some of you, when you receive your admissions to Berkeley, you were like, absolutely, I knew I was gonna get in 100%, you know, they would have made a mistake if they wouldn't have let me in. And that's amazing and beautiful, we wanna celebrate you. And then there's some of us who when we got in, we like double check the email, we triple checked the name because we could not believe in that moment that we had gotten into UC Berkeley. So wherever you are in that spectrum, we just wanna make sure that you understand uh, the following. Nobody made a mistake. Yes, you were accepted to UC Berkeley. Yes, you are absolutely phenomenal. And we are so grateful that you're giving us the opportunity to be here in this modified new student celebration. We wish we could be with you in person but obviously in this global pandemic, we wanted to make sure that we kept everybody safe, but that we still were authentic in celebrating you, letting you know that we're here for you and saying that we are incredibly grateful for your trust with applying to our campus and that we are so excited to be in this conversation with you. We are not gonna try to convince you to come to Berkeley today. What we're gonna do today is we wanna show the community that you are a part of should you choose us. We wanna make sure that you hear stories from students, that you learn about financial aid, that you learn from one of our phenomenal professors, and that we answer your questions afterwards in our Q&A session. So with that, I'm going to check my mic and pass it over to Yuki. Thanks so much, Ruben. And I think we really want to highlight that as co-hosts, we're honored to share this virtual space with you because Ruben and I were in your shoes many years ago. So Ruben and I are both EOP alum of UC Berkeley. We were on campus at the same time. We worked in the EOP office together. So we know what it feels like to receive that letter. And like Ruben said, to experience that imposter syndrome and the uncertainties and the questions about how is this going to impact my family when I I play such a, a pivotal role and support system in my family members back home. So we really acknowledge that this is a wider ecosystem, right? We know that as EOP students, your academic identity inside the classroom is not your sole responsibility and identity. We know that you have financial responsibilities. You might be a caretaker or have siblings or loved ones that you reach out after. And we just wanna make sure that you feel supported, that you have all the questions asked and answered that we can to the best of our ability. We like to say in EOP, if we don't know the answer, we're going to find somebody who does and connect you in that warm handoff as well. So please know that we understand where you're coming from. We welcome your questions. There is not a question too big or too small. Um, and we really hope that this gives you a glimpse of our community that you'll have access to, to and through your journey at UC Berkeley. So 
Also, another important update that we want to share with you all. Many of you have received messaging about Cal Week. So this is our virtual open house that UC Berkeley is offering from April 18th to the 24th. And we really, really encourage you all to plug in. I know it can be overwhelming. There's a lot of messaging and emails going out and it can be confusing, but this is really great resources and information that will help you and guide you in these next couple of weeks as you make such an important decision and information that you can share with your family members and loved ones as well. So plug in, like Ruben mentioned, directly after this, we're having a live question and answers. So I'm sure with some of the information from our, our speaker lineup, you might have more questions, but know that that's not a bad thing at all. We welcome them and we wanna make sure that you feel supported from every angle and every way. And as I mentioned in the beginning, EOP students are a generous part of our student population and such a valuable asset. So this is a glimpse of where all of you are from. So we have over 5,000 incoming EOP students in this next Frosh class. And we're super excited to share that you all are the most diverse class that UC Berkeley has seen in the past 20 years. So kudos and snaps for y'all. I know it took so many hours so much effort, so many late nights of studying and preparing to make it to this point. And we really want this time to be a celebration for you and also a connecting moment for you to see where your fellow peers and classmates are coming from. So we see Oakland, Las Vegas, there's out of state, Santa Rosa, Irvine. So know that everyone right now is tuned in and plugged in from your living room from your bed, from your couch, wherever your comfy place is. Um, we're gonna share all this information and help you in this journey. So now I have the super, super delight and pleasure to introduce probably one of my favorite students of all time. Um, I literally met Jay Johnson five years ago during this same cycle around Cal Week and Cal Day. Um, Jay was a student that I met down in Los Angeles at a welcome reception that admissions hosted, and she is now in her fifth and final year at UC Berkeley, an MCB major, a super STEM scholar, um, and a renowned artist. So Jay is going to set off our time together with some positive grounding intentions through her spoken word gift. So I will pass it over to Jay. Hi, everyone. My name's Jay, Kwa Jay, but I go by Jay. She, they pronouns. Uh, yeah, this is my fifth year. This is it for me. It's going full circle, Yuki. We've been rocking for a long time, and it's really evident uh, for those watching that EOP really sticks with you throughout your process if you open up that door and really take advantage of the resources and the fact that it's a family. Um, so for me, um, uh, I'm first generation, former foster youth. I spent 18 years of my life in foster care. And EOP was central to the snowball effect of my involvement in community and access to other campus resources. Um, it seemed like after meeting Yuki and SIR to Berkeley, I then met the Berkeley Hope Scholars Program for former foster youth and the California Youth Connection, which really spearheaded my research and involvement in politics, and then the Biology Scholars Program, which I'm repping right here, and EOP STEM for those who are underrepresented in the STEM community. These are all sources that kind of branched out from my involvement in EOP. So here's a little bit of wisdom to offer to those um, who are watching. So one quote that really stuck with me throughout this whole college experience is, what the mind can perceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Many students are burdened with the misconception that they don't belong here. Academics are challenging, regardless of the front some may put forth, and that front itself can be especially difficult for first-generation students. Students may struggle with learning how to learn, and this includes learning their resources for tutoring, taking notes, study habits, or being compensated for test anxieties. The CE3, and specifically the EOP department, is avid about mentoring those who are new to college classes and different environments so that they may reach a realization of their own potential and move forward in their fields of interest. Too often, people show what they know and hide what they don't, and that hinders, hinders peers more often than it helps them. It's important to step back and help one another because that brings a genuine sense of unity, and that's something that I really saw in EOP. So one, advocate for yourself, and if you don't, Find, if you don't know how, find someone who will. And EOP is a great office to start. Two, never let yourself settle for less, because less may be what you know, but trust you're worth the best. Three, really you're worth a chance, and when offered, I hope you take it, but spreading yourself thin, that's not how you're gonna make it. 
Four, ground yourself in something deep. It can't be uprooted by power outages or pandemic influence. Five, your lineage is deeply rooted, worth celebrating. Even if you don't get the chance to walk that stage at graduation, we live in stages. You got control. You are the stage. In some ways, are already paved. Six, understand the difference between self-love and selfish. And with that, never hesitate to put yourself first. Seven, the key is boundaries. And that's something you're going to learn. Because I offer wisdom, but some lessons are learned. Eight, Love and make time for those who love and care for you, for the systems that nurture you, for the ancestors that carry you, and for you. I hope you're there for you. Nine, and if you still find yourself isolated and alone, convinced you don't belong, know that you are wrong, and maybe it's on you to create and cultivate the environment and network you need. Do it, because chances are you're not the only one who needs what you can build, create, and offer. Ten, take chances so you can make generational strides and take it further. And if I could live this life over again, I wouldn't change it. Since 15, I've been in classes while mama caged in. I grew impatient, just wanted to be liberated. But she been in and out ever since she been on probation. I crack a smile, but that was all for motivation. They thought I couldn't handle the pressure, but I amazed them. There's always been a light at the end, so I've been chasing, my mind racing. I'm determined to really make it. Never going back to the bottom, I'm groundbreaking. I'm out the pavement, built to follow a path to greatness. We're game changing. We some victims of a system that was built on hatred. We gonna make it, just be patient. This entire experience has been a blessing as I reflect and prepare to transition out of Berkeley. I'm blessed to be able to look back and see that I was once in a place where I was not seen or could not exist, forcing myself to squeeze into boxes, only feeling allowed to live in fragments, but by choosing to love and be afforded the opportunity to create and cultivate space where all of me could exist, I have exuded that energy and I hope it reached many students who are on a journey to loving themselves fully. Thank you all for listening. You are in for a treat as my team here gets into the details of all the things that make Berkeley EOP and CO3 exceptional resources for you if you choose us. That was absolutely powerful and beautiful, Jay. You know, we rehearsed this a couple of times and every time that you share your spoken word with us, it just gives me chills. So thank you so much for being willing to bring some art and truth to power with your spoken word. Absolutely love and abundance for you. Um, now we're gonna transition to the conversation about what community are you coming into? You know, one of the questions that you might have right now is, am I going to be alone as I transition to the Bay? Some of you are going to be nearby and you're going to feel at home because this has been your home. Some of you are not going to feel at home on campus, even though you were born and raised in the Bay. And some of you are coming from many, many miles away from this. I know that when I got accepted into Berkeley and I came to Berkeley, it was the first time that I had ever heard about UC Berkeley and had ever been to Berkeley, the city and the campus. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. But the reason why I said yes to Berkeley was because of EOP, because I had multiple people from the EOP community do this, uh, get on the phone and call me and call my mom and have conversations with us. So we wanted to make sure that you knew that the family is even bigger than EOP. It's the Center for Educational Equity and Excellence family that you have. We have folks here that are going to be representing so many different communities and areas. You have folks who are first generation, coming from low income working class backgrounds, folks of color, uh, undocumented, former and current foster youth, veterans, reentry students that can be 25 years and older, or folks that started their education and left for whatever reason are coming back to complete. They can be parenting students. Um, and they can be transfer students that are coming from community college. The, the amount of community that you're going to have is incredibly abundant. You're going to have multiple people that have had experiences that you really thought you were the only one that went through whatever it is that you went through. And we're going to be here to support you. Your peers are going to be hired in these programs. There's professional staff that have been in the university for multiple years, or some of them re recently graduated and now are on the other side to provide you support. Our main message here is for you to know there's people that are going to be here to welcome you, and not just when you get here, but we're going to he be here with you every phase of your journey and your best of days and your most challenging of days, when you feel that you cannot lose and when you feel you cannot win, we're gonna be right there with you. 
So please take that to heart. Share that with the people that are in your circle. For some of us, those are parents. For some of those, those are our peers. For some of those, those are our loved ones, our teachers, our guardians. Please know that you're not going to be alone and there's going to be somebody here with you from the point that you arrive to the point that you graduate. And to lift two of those phenomenal leaders that you are going to have the gift of experiencing, it's my honor to check the mic here and pass it over to Brianna and to Liliana. So both of these are incredible leaders who had a phenomenal experience as students and now lead two of our most impressive and powerful programs on campus. So I'll check the mic there and pass it over to Bri and Lily. Thanks, Ruben. Hi, y'all. My name is Brianna Wright, and I'm the program director for EOP. First of all, just really want to say congratulations on your admissions. It's such an honor to spend this time with you and your loved ones as you celebrate your admissions and navigate this college making decision process. Um, as an alum of EOP and of UC Berkeley, I remember when I first got my acceptance letter, I had such a range of emotions. I was really worried, I was confused, and I was also really excited and proud. I had a ton of questions, and I also had no idea what to ask all at the same time. So if you're feeling any range of emotion, if you have any types of questions, just know we're here for you throughout all of that. And that's really what today is for. So I hope you enjoy, take in all this information that you're gonna be receiving, be prepared to ask us questions because we wanna help you answer them. And really just congratulations and welcome to the EOP family. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Lily. Thank you, Bri. Hi, everyone. My name is Liliana Iglesias. I am the program director for the Undocumented Student Program. And um, we are one of the programs that are, well, sister programs of EOP. Uh, and we serve our undocumented students. So uh, just to give you a quick glimpse of our programs, we have academic counseling, financial support, um, immigration legal support, and mental health support. So know that we are here for you throughout the, your journey, and we hope you enjoy this webinar. I'll pass it back to one of your co-hosts, Vicky. Thank you so much, Bri and Lily. Um, and again, this is just a glimpse of all the abundant resources that y'all will have access to if and when you decide to give us the honor of picking UC Berkeley. Now, I know a lot of you have submitted really great questions about what is EOP, how do I access it, what type of services do you all offer? So I wanna go into a little bit of a deep dive to share some more information about how you can connect with us and all the reasons why you can connect with us. So again, like we mentioned in the beginning, if you received a welcome message from us, that's great. You're automatically a part of our family. You don't have to apply to EOP. We do have what's called the EOP verification process. So all that is just confirming your eligibility when you first come to see us in the summer or fall semesters. So don't worry about having to submit any extra paperwork. We really try to have as much of an open door policy as we can in EOP. So that was another great question that folks were submitting. Do I have to meet with an EOP counselor monthly? Can I meet with them my junior year? Is it just in my first year? Our family is overflowing, y'all. We have an open door policy, which means you can come see us as much as you need us, as much as we can be of help and support to you in your journey. So if that's meeting with a counselor throughout your first semester, your second year, your third year and beyond, we have a wealth of different resources that we wanna make sure that you're aware of from the very beginning in your time at UC Berkeley. So what we really are is we're a holistic academic counseling unit. And what that means is we are trained across all of the academic departments and colleges, the different majors and minor programs, but we do it from a holistic lens. And what that means is we understand that your identity as a student is not the only hat that you wear, that you're balancing so many other factors. Some of you all might be working or having to send money home. Others of you might have you know, different transitional challenges. And we want to make sure that we create a plan that sets you up for success in your first semester and beyond as well. 
So if that means creating a four-year plan, if that means exploring different majors or different policies, that's what you can come to us for. And we also are supportive in thinking about the ripple effect, right? How does that affect your housing? How does that affect you know, time with family and any responsibilities that you have, whether family is local or eight hours away as well? We also have some limited financial assistance programs in the form of fee waivers, grants, and scholarships. And these are all listed on our website under the financial assistance section. Um, and then student leadership opportunities. So we want to make sure that we are developing our leaders. And as you've heard, a lot of our speakers today are EOP alum and folks who've decided to give back and pour back into the EOP community. So we have internships and paid positions. Um, we'll introduce you to some of our student staff later in the slideshows. And also, as you go through your journey, we want to make sure that whatever you choose to do after Cal, that you're set up for success and that you have the stepping stones to get to those opportunities. So if that's graduate school, if it's career exploration, those are conversations that you can have to an EOP counselor. So EOP, really, we are like a one-stop shop. We want to make sure that we centralize the resources for you. We oftentimes bring different campus partners to do what's called satellite advising in our space. So we have great friends in financial aid who will host weekly hours with us and the College of Letters and Science and different academic departments. So our goal is really to make your pathway as smooth as it can be and bringing all the resources and information to your forefront. But more than anything, we really are a place for love, community, and support. You'll hear this really echoed throughout all of the presentations today. EOP is a space that if you are just having a bad day and you need to sit on somebody's couch and boohoo and let it out, that can happen too. It doesn't just have to be a four-year plan. If you're having a bad breakup, if you're having roommate challenges, if you're having food security issues, those are all things that fall with, with under the EOP umbrella. And we want you to know that there's no issue too small or too big to come to our doorstep. One program highlight I do want to give a shout out to is one of our newer initiatives, the EOP STEM program. So a lot of y'all have submitted questions about what is it, how do I get connected? EOP STEM was a project that was student initiated by some of our student leaders in EOP. And it really is a space for students who are intended STEM majors or declared in the STEM field to connect with academic resources, professional development, and community spaces as well to make sure that EOP students are visible and connected to the resources to be successful in the STEM field. So we have a mentorship program where you're paired with another student and you get to talk about study strategies, you get to talk about how to build community in some of these classrooms that are, you know, 200, 300, 400 people. Um, and we also take students on company visits. So we've been to YouTube, LinkedIn, Dropbox in the past. So if you're considering a STEM major, if you're interested in STEM, if you want to learn more about STEM, please make sure that you visit our website. There's a brief application for EOP STEM and it's a really great community to get plugged into early on. Um, I also want to give a couple updates and announcements to some of the common questions y'all have been submitting in. So please know that we are excited to meet with you. We're excited to get to know your stories and learn more about your backgrounds. Um, a lot of students have been asking, when can I meet with an EOP counselor? Can I schedule an appointment? So we're asking all newly admitted FROSH students that you can complete your Golden Bear advising. So that will be a module that's part of your Golden Bear orientation transition. Once you complete that after the May 1st SIR deadline, then you can start connecting with us one-on-one. -on -one. And they offer a lot of great information about enrollment, classes, and scheduling that'll be really foundational to our first couple of appointments. Um, a lot of folks have also been asking about the Berkeley Student Co-ops. So for those who are not familiar with the Berkeley Student Co-ops, it's an affordable housing organization um, that has apartments and houses all around um, local campus. EOP students get priority preference in the co-ops. And what that is, is if you are EOP verified, you just need to contact advising at berkeley.edu and we'll add you to the list. So this is something that newly admitted students you can do as you're thinking about housing options going into the fall semester. And lastly, we just also want to put a date on your radar. Um, at the end of August, after you complete your Golden Bear orientation, we will be partnering with the Undocumented Student Program to offer our new student welcome. So this will be a way for you to connect with us in person. We'll share a lot more information about our services um, and just meeting some friendly faces. So keep a lookout for that. That will be our touch point to welcome you into our family in the fall semester. And I also wanted to make sure that folks are aware of our new admin resource guide. So we just released it. It's on our welcome page on our website. This has over 30 different 
campus organizations, student orgs, um, and departments that will be really pivotal in making your first semester and first year a success at UC Berkeley. So be sure to check this out. Again, EOP has a really strong campus referral network. So if we don't know the answer, these are some of the allies, support systems that we'll be reaching out with to make sure that you have everything you need and more. I also want to give Ruben a little bit of time to share more about the UC Berkeley Basic Needs Support Team and some resources that y'all can be aware of. Thank you for that, Yuki. And hopefully y'all are feeling all of the abundance and gifts of everything that is here for you if and when you choose us and become part of our UC Berkeley uh, family. You know, one of the challenges that my family kept bringing up when I got into Berkeley, they weren't worried about my academics. They weren't worried about whether or not I was gonna be able to keep up with school. What they were mostly worried about was, was I gonna have enough money? Was I gonna be able to uh, live safely? Was I gonna be able to eat every day? Those were the challenges that were coming up. For all intents and purposes, you can call all of those basic needs. And today we are incredibly, incredibly grateful and honored to share with you that you're coming into a UC Berkeley that is so much better in terms of our basic needs efforts. We actually have a basic needs center with a dedicated team of staff and student staff that are here for you should you ever come into any circumstance of challenges with your money, with your food, with your housing, with your health and medical expenses, and any other emergency. What you're seeing right now on the screen is you're seeing in a, uh, our food pantry on the upper left-hand corner. On the bottom left is all of the interns and volunteers that we have. We have over 65 folks that are keeping that place operational and filled with love. We're going out into community, as you see in the middle up uh, center photo. On the bottom center photo, you see that we host our county and city services on campus so that you don't have to go out into city and county offices and uh, services. We provide them all in-house here at Berkeley. And on the far right, what you're seeing is our COVID-19 evolved efforts. Just because campus is shut down and folks are shelter in place does not mean that everybody is safely sheltered or has food or has money. Our team is going on our van to dropping off groceries. We are processing rental assistance support forms in-house. We are keeping uh, a satellite basic needs center. I'm on campus right now. The basic needs team is here and making sure that we're taking care of folks, not just um, pre-pandemic, during pandemic, but especially after the pandemic, which is when you all would be coming in. I just wanna make sure that you have a very clear yes there's gonna be a team and resources to take care of your basic needs. Communicate that to the people that love you. Communicate that to the people that are part of the conversation of you deciding whether or not you should come to Berkeley. There's a basic need center for you along all of the services that you just heard from EOP and CE3. So with that, I'll check my Mac and pass it over to Yuki for our next Thanks so much, Ruben. And I also wanna acknowledge y'all that this is a lot of information. So many of you might be overwhelmed, like, wow, this is too many things, too many links, too many departments. Take your time processing this. And again, in the live Q&A at the end, that's when we can do some follow-up and you can submit any specific questions that we can help you to digest some of this information. So it's okay if you're overwhelmed, it's okay if we're throwing out too many acronyms, um, but just slow us down, keep us rounded, and we just wanna make sure that you have access to all the information and resources, and then we can support you in processing it over time too. So now that you have a better sense of CE3 and our EOP and USP families, we also wanna put some names to faces. So we couldn't welcome you all in person as we had hoped for our welcome reception, but we wanted to bring the faces of EOP to you all virtually. So the, this is a glimpse of some of our counseling staff. So these are folks that you'll be meeting with in the fall semester and connecting with at our new student welcome. Um, we also have two awesome, phenomenal, leaders in the undocumented student program staff and then finally our peer academic counselors or PACs so EOP and USP we have a team of PACs who are trained across financial aid academic policies housing and the positive is that they're students just like you so they're going through the ups and downs the challenges they know the inside scoop of it all um, and they're here to hold space for you all as well and offer resources and a perspective that oftentimes us as counselors 
don't have. So make sure that you stay connected, that you find us in the fall semester, um, and that you know that there's multiple doors that you can knock on in the time being. So I'm really excited now that y'all have a foundational sense of who we are and what we do. I want to introduce our next speaker who's going to tell you a little more about her first year transition. So Esmeralda Ruiz Navarro, she is finishing her first year at UC Berkeley. It's been a pretty eventful first year to say the least. Um, but she's going to share some of her reflections as she was in your same exact shoes just a year ago. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Esme. Hi everyone, I'm Esmeralda Navarro and I'm a first year cow and I'm also an intended public health major and I'm also pre-health. So it's kind of crazy to think about how a year ago I was exactly in your shoes. I remember seeing the confetti fall down from my screen as I opened my acceptance. I was excited to put that cutout Berkeley bound star on my door. And I remember wanting, being excited to my friends, my teachers who supported me throughout high school and my college um, application process. And most importantly, I was really excited to tell my parents. And being Latinx and first gen born in the USA and first gen going to college, um, being accepted to college felt like all my hard work had paid off and all the sacrifices that my parents and I had made had also paid off. So even though being accepted to college was really big reward and, and really exciting, it also came with really big decisions and I wasn't stuck with where do I go to school. And so one of the things that I fell in love with Berkeley was that it carries so much respect. And I felt like I worked really hard in, in high school and I wanted to go to a really well-respected school. So I also wanted to place myself in an environment where I was gonna have to continue to work hard. So with the academic rigor and accomplishments that, that Cal is known for, I knew that I would have no choice but to work hard and continue to grind. So I also loved the opportunity. I wanted to be in a place that would allow me to feel free to move and explore in any direction that I would choose, whether it was academic or whether it was personal. I didn't want to feel limited. And let me tell you, Cal is in the Bay. There are countless of opportunities for growth in your experiences for your future career, your hobbies. And there's also really good bubble places as well. Um, however, little did I know that like clicking that acceptance on Cal Central page, my Cal Central page was just the beginning of my UC Berkeley experience. So I was 17 when I first moved into my dorms and it felt so surreal. I had never seen or even experienced secondhand what a college experience was like. So I was constantly trying to wrap my head around all of it as each day passed. And at first I really started missing my family, of course. I tried to get used to the fact that I didn't see a lot of people that came from the same ethnicity or culture that I am. And I was really trying to get to know my roommates who were from China and from India. So it was all a really huge adjustment. But I think the day that everything really hit me was when the first day of school, it, it was also my 18th birthday that day. So I will never forget it. And my first class was math. And math at Berkeley is on a whole different level. You're pushed to potential that you didn't even know that you had. And I walked out of that class, honestly, feeling defeated. I felt like I wasn't prepared. The imposter syndrome kicked in so hard and I was so unsure of what to do. I didn't even know who to reach out to or what I could really ask to help me, myself, but I did know that I was an EOP, so I started there. And my first, I had my first meeting with EOP and I learned I was so not alone. The counselors reassured me and told me stories of other students who were or had been in the same boat that I was. And I think that as students that hold the EOP identities, we tend to feel that we need to be really independent and need to get things done on our own because that's kind of how we got here. And however, I learned really fast that asking for help could be so much more beneficial than anything else. And EOP directed me to a lot of resources such as the Student Learning Center where I could use the free tutoring services and other online resources that I could use to help me feel more comfortable in my classes. But what I really think helped me the most from EOP was that EOP acknowledges that you are so much more than a student. I'm pretty sure that all of you thrived in areas m much more than just your grades to get to Cal. So many other things in college as well can affect your academic experience and your college experience in general. So I had to work on myself every day. I had to keep reminding myself that I earned the right to be at Cal and that this whole experience was not just for me. I have always thought that my name represented three names, my mom, my dad, and my name. And that is really what kept me going throughout the whole first semester and now. And I continued to check in with EOP throughout my first semester because they were there for me for more than academics. They were there for me for whatever I needed. 
and from helping me save little money on stuff that I needed for classes to helping me power through the big adjustment phase, EOP really became my home and it was always something I recommended for my friends to utilize if I knew that they were in EOP as well because I knew the benefits of it. So fast forward to this semester, second semester, and I totally felt different. I finally felt like I could hang with academic rigor and that this was my school, you know? I wanted to get the most out of it and I wanted to do my best and I wanted to show that where I came from has never been a setback. And I continued to bother my favorite EOP counselors. Um, and I think it truly hit me when I realized I was doing so much better this semester was because last semester I felt so behind and sometimes it felt like I was gonna fail. And that was never really the case. It was just because a lot of the material that was being covered, a lot of students had already covered really well in high school. They were just simply more prepared than I was and that was really never my fault. So second semester, the playing field was equal. It was all new info for all of us. So I really felt like I could show that I could really truly play the game, you know? And sometimes that's the reality of it. Some students come in with like way better preparation, but that does not mean that you are anything less. You might have to work a little harder to catch up. I surely had to, but where you come from should never feel like a setback. And now that I'm at home, appreciating a lot more to be at school, um, I truly realize like what I have learned so far in my first short year, um, you are not alone and you had never have been. People are really good at hiding what they're going through, but help is there. You just gotta have to look for it. And don't be afraid to ask for help. I cannot stress that enough because it could connect you to what you need and help you feel way more secure. Um, trust in your hard work and do your best. You could always, so you could always be able to say that you gave it your best shot. And also that your journey is your journey. Um, there's no time limit or no comparison to other journey, other people's journey. You're creating your own path for only a future that you can see. And I have to continue to remind myself of this too. And finally, like, I just want to say that no matter what college you choose, even though we would love for you to be a golden bear, um, every experience is valid. So whether you have the time of your life, right when you get to Cal or, or any other college, or it takes a little bit like of adjustment period and reaching out with people, your experience is your experience and that is okay. So ultimately be yourself because that's how you got here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Esma, for being willing to share your story with us. You know, the power of stories is what has us here today. And this is a moment to remind you all that really the only difference between you all watching and us on this side facilitating this conversation is time. Uh, we were all in that place that you're in right now, having the similar internal conversations and external conversations that you're having. And that's why it was so important for us to make sure that we were lifting students in this uh, webinar and this event that we are hosting for you all. And also to make sure that we brought somebody from financial aid. We know that so many of the questions in this time have to do with money, can I afford it, the different messages that you're getting from different people. So what we did is we tapped into one of the most phenomenal and powerful national advocates for financial aid. Uh, I have the huge honor and privilege of introducing Silvia Marquez uh, in this conversation. Silvia's going to tell you a little bit about their story, so I don't want to steal their shine. I think for now, all I can say to you all is for any of you that are coming from the backgrounds that we're coming from, that might be thinking that you will never be able to be at the top of, uh, of an institution the size of Berkeley, um, but you're really passionate about it and you're hearing those kinds of messages. That's one of the reasons why we love having Sylvia here. Sylvia is somebody who has worked their way up to leadership position in financial aid, is a major advocate and influencer for financial aid across the state of California and across the country. So it's my honor to introduce Sylvia here for her to share a little bit about her story and then give us all of the wisdom for financial aid for us to be able to factor wisdom in our conversations rather than fears and worry. So I'll check my mic there and pass it over to Sylvia. Thank you, Ruben. Welcome everyone. As Ruben said, my name is Sylvia Marquez. I'm an Associate Director in Financial Aid and Scholarships. I use she, hers. 
Um, and first and foremost, I want to congratulate you on your admission to Berkeley. You worked incredibly hard and you're so resilient and you should be incredibly proud of this accomplishment. Um, what I wanna do uh, is just tell you a little bit about me. I'm from the Central Valley, um, from Stockton, California. I know some of you out there from Stockton. Um, way to represent the 209. Um, I come from a low income, first generation family. I was the first in my family to um, graduate from a four year college. Um, and I finished my degree in social welfare here at Cal. Um, one of the other really important things I work on on campus is our undergraduate diversity project because it's incredibly important, important to us as an institution to make sure we have as diverse of a population of students and, and just the richness that comes from that. And so I do a lot of work in that area and with our colleagues in EOP. Um, and having come from a low income family, I know um, where challenges were always, a, a finances were always a challenge. It's incredibly important for me to have had my financial aid when I was going through college. Um, without it, I, I'm not sure that I would have been able to complete it. And so I wish I had known more at that point in time as well. And so what I'm hoping is that by the end of this presentation, you'll have more information as you're making your decision. And even if you don't have the answers to all your questions, I'm hoping that you'll at least have questions or know what questions to ask next. And information is power. So I wanna go ahead and get started. Um, first, what I wanna do is talk to you a little bit about um, net costs. You, know, you probably have a lot of questions about how to compare offers between different institutions. Um, and so it's really important for you to understand all the information you've been provided from all of these campuses. So the best way to do that um, is for me to show you just a short video um, to talk to you a bit about net cost because that is the number that you wanna compare from campus to campus. And then after that, we'll dive into the Berkeley specifics um, about the cost of attendance, Cal Central, and then some other important details about our process. Okay, you've got your financial aid letter. There's a lot to take in. And you may not know what it all means. Each college presents their financial aid a little differently. The most important thing to focus on is the net cost. This is what you'll actually have to pay. To figure out net cost, you start with the total cost of attendance, which includes everything from tuition, housing, books, food, transportation, and personal expenses. Then you subtract out all of your scholarships and grants. This is free aid that you don't have to pay back. This number is your net cost and the actual amount that you and your parents should prepare to pay. And you can use loans and work study to do this. Once you know a school's net cost, you can then compare the financial aid offers from other universities. At UC, we have the financial aid shopping sheet. This gives you financial aid information in a consistent format and calculates the net costs. Many other colleges and universities use it too. So take a deep breath. And if you have any questions, get in touch with your campus financial aid office. We'll have links in the video description. Great. So I wanna go ahead and dive in to our cost of attendance, which is the key piece of information that you just saw in the video. Um, and so this is our cost of attendance for the 2020-21 academic year. And I know the numbers at the bottom can be a little bit scary. So what I wanna do is break down um, what all of this means and how it impacts your aid so that you can talk with your families about um, how to interpret this information. So let's start with breaking it down into two sections. The top section are your direct costs. And what I mean by direct costs is those are the expenses that the university will charge you directly. So things like tuition, um, room and board, if you choose to live with us on campus in a residence hall or an on-campus apartment, um, health insurance, if you choose to purchase ours, those are all things we will um, charge you for directly in your student account. The bottom section are your indirect or other estimated costs. So we, if you're living in the residence halls and you have a meal plan, we add in a little more for food because you may not always wanna eat in the residence hall. You might wanna go out and get a slice of pizza or something. Um, books and supplies, personal and transportation, these are all estimates. The, this part of the budget is where you are um, sort of dictating how much you actually spend. Are you buying new books? Are you borrowing? Are you checking them out of the library? 
Are you spending um, more or less on transportation and personal expenses? So you get to determine what those actual expenses are in the bottom section of the cost of attendance. So this serves as sort of our basis for how much financial aid you will need and the types of financial aid that you might be eligible for based on your living arrangement. And so you'll see all four types of living arrangements here. On the next slide, I want to talk a little bit about Cal Central. So I'm sure many of you have already been in to see your financial aid awards. There's a lot of information in Cal Central. It really is your one stop for um, academics, finances, costs, and um, communications and other things. And so let's, let's take this apart a little bit. Um, and let's start with the in most important information, which is if you choose to join us for the next academic year, um, under the congratulation message is where you will find um, the way to accept your offer of admission. And it's really important to take a look at the information that's here because it's very possible that you won't be required to pay the enrollment deposit um, if you choose to join us. So that's always incredibly important. Um, right in the middle, what you will find are um, tasks. So if there are things that you need to complete, you will find them here on your dashboard and they'll be sectioned off by area. So admissions and financial aid, Etc. So it's always good to take a look at those. Click on the view button to expand and see more information there. Um, on the right side of the slide, you'll see there's notifications. You're going to get a lot of communications from many different offices. It's always really important to look at these messages, especially the university messages, for more information. We don't want you to miss out on anything. Um, so be sure to check that regularly. And then under the new admit resources, you'll find lots of answers to. Um, typical questions that new students are asking, so please take a moment to look at those. And then navigating through Cal Central, at the very top, um, you'll see the My Finances uh, tab. Let's go ahead and click on that and dive right into the awards. So again, you'll have billing information once you get into My Finances um, on the left. And in the middle is where your financial aid information, your journey starts. So let's click on the View Awards. And so this page has, again, a lot of information. And so I wanna take a moment to, to break it down a little bit. Um, let's start at the upper left section. This is where you're gonna find your net cost information. So much of what Jamal was sharing in the video. This is the number that you wanna compare from schools to school because it will tell you um, approximately what, how much loan and work you're going to be offered from each school. And that's incredibly important. Um, just below that section, you'll find your communications. So again, you'll find them on the, on the dashboard, but you'll find them here as well. So it's important to take uh, some time to look at your communications and your tasks, which we'll come back to in a minute. In the middle of the page, you'll find your estimated cost of attendance again. You can click on each item listed there in the cost of attendance to get more information. And it's also really important to always look at your cost of attendance and your awards by term. And so there's a, there's a yellow arrow there that says view term amount. You may have some expenses that apply only to one semester. So if you're thinking about things like fall program for freshmen or Global Edge, it's always good to take a look at your budget by semester. And just below that is your housing information. So if you're thinking about doing one of those first year pathways, this is where you can change your financial aid information, your budget information that would then impact your financial aid information. You can play with it over and over again. It doesn't commit you to any particular program. Again, this is just an estimate so that you can see how a change to the type of program might impact your financial aid. And then on the right-hand side is where you will see your awards. The way we list these are always from the best type of awards to the most desirable, so the grants and scholarships that you won't have to pay back, to the, maybe the least desirable awards at the bottom. So you'll find grants and scholarships at the top, work study, and then loans at the bottom. We also list our loans from most desirable to least desirable. So the subsidized loans will be listed first, and those are loans that you won't have to worry about the interest while you're enrolled in school. Um, again, viewing this by term is always a great thing to do so that you have an understanding of how much aid to expect in each semester. What you'll see throughout this page is that there are little arrows next to um, whether that's your tasks or if that's your awards. And what that does is it will give you more information. And in this particular example that we're using, the student has conditional awards. 
And your awards could be conditional for a couple of reasons. One may be related to establishing residency. The other may be that you've been selected for verification. And so what I would like to do now is let's click on the little arrow and take us to the next page. Again, even more information. So I wanna be sure we spend a little bit of time talking about this. Um, let's start first with the awards. So if you expand those awards, it will tell you um, if that award is for both semesters or just one semester, and then a little bit of additional information about the type of award that you're looking at. So it's always good to take a look at that. Expanding um, information also applies to your tasks. So in this particular case, um, our test student is selected for verification. And it doesn't mean you did anything wrong on your application. It just means that the Department of Education or the state is asking us to um, validate and document the information that you put on your application. And so we're here to help you do that. Um, you'll find all the information that you need once you expand that task, um, including how to submit it, where's the link, how to establish your account. You can start the verification process uh, once you have accepted your offer of admission to Berkeley and establish your account at ID. Um, if we move on, what we will find. So many of our students, um, if you're like me and many of the people on this call, there are lots of folks that are supporting you as you go through this process. Parents, family members, other supporters. Uh, and if you want us to uh, provide information to whoever your supporters are that are, are helping you navigate this process, uh, you do need to provide delegated access to those folks. So it's not just giving us verbal confirmation that we can speak to a parent or a guardian or a spouse, but we actually need you to go through the process of telling us who exactly they are. And the way that you do that is through Cal Central. So first you click on your profile picture, um, and then you're gonna click profile. And on the left-hand side, you will see a menu for delegated access. If you click on that, and then create and manage a new delegate, add the person that you would like us to be able to speak to. If you don't do this, we won't be able to provide information and we're required by federal law to protect your information. So please do this so that we can help you and your supporters uh, navigate the process. So Sylvia, how do I get more money? I need more funding. Um, always a common question, especially at this time of the year. We encourage our students to apply for outside scholarships. You know, there's one application to, um, receive financial aid from the federal state and from the university which is the fafsa or the dream act application outside of that we don't have any additional scholarship um, applications so once you're packaged we've awarded you um, the maximum amount of grants scholarships loans work study that you're eligible for so to get more we strongly encourage our students to apply for private scholarships um, all of the awards that you receive, whether that's from the university, the state, the federal government, um, and your outside institutions, they can't exceed your cost of attendance. We'll talk about how to increase your cost of attendance so we make room for all of the awards that you're bringing on, but just know that we, um, we have to take everything into account into your cost of attendance um, so that we don't exceed it. That said, we strongly encourage you to still apply for outside scholarships because our commitment to you is that we want you to maximize every free dollar that you get. And so our commitment to you is that we will reduce your subsidized loans and work studies first before we touch the grants and scholarships you've been awarded. There are always a few exceptions to that, but that's our general commitment to you so that you can maximize those dollars. And to start your search at the very bottom, you'll see um, the scholarship search page to get started. So we also understand that there are um, many families that are going through really significant financial um, circumstances right now, and they're incredibly challenging. And so we have a lot of families that are asking about how to do an appeal. So before you get started on an appeal, I want to just cover a couple of areas that are really important for you to understand before you get started. Um, so what we generally can consider are losses or reduction of income, um, if there's a passing of a parent or a spouse, or um, divorce or separation. Those are the typical things you'll find on the left-hand side that we consider. There are also some other things that we can't consider that you'll find on the right-hand side. So changes to assets, we know that that's happening, but we can't consider those 
um, consumer debt, so credit card debt, other sorts of things. Those are things we typically can't consider. I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about um, two populations that we tend to be a bit more challenged in supporting, um, just in general, the public institution. So first is students that um, have a zero expected family contribution or zero EFC. If you're in this group, what that means is that we've offered you the maximum in grants and scholarships that we are able to award. Um, and so, again, it's always really important to look for outside scholarships so that you can keep what we've awarded you and then reduce your loans and work study once you bring in those outside scholarships. The other group where this message is particularly challenging to del deliver is for our non-resident population. Um, if you're in this group, it's important to know that we are restricted um, based on university policy from awarding any additional grant or scholarship on top of, um, in addition to what you already have in your package. Um, and so just know that for these two populations specifically, submitting an appeal, unfortunately, is not going to result in any additional grant aid. Um, and then just so you know, our parent and student contribution appeals, if you are going to submit one, we will open up that process beginning on May 1st. So we talked a little bit about how to increase your cost of attendance. So if you bring in lots of outside grants and scholarships, that's wonderful. Um, we are limited to your cost of attendance. So how do you increase that? So the way to increase your cost of attendance is to document what additional expenses you have beyond what um, is already in your budget. So if you purchase a computer, if you have outside medical or dental expenses that you need to cover out of pocket, transportation or childcare expenses, or if your rent or housing contract are higher than the standard cost of attendance, the um, cost of attendance adjustment request is how you would go through that process. Typically, this will result in more loans and work study. However, like I said, if you're bringing in a lot of outside scholarships, this is one way to help um, ensure that you'll get to keep more of those dollars. So how do you get in touch with us? I gave you a lot of information. It's gonna take a little bit to digest all of this. So the way you get in touch with financial aid, billing, and the Office of the Registrar is through Cal Student Central. This is our one-stop office um, where you can come and ask all of those um, initial questions. And if we can't get it answered at Cal Student Central, we will certainly pass on those questions and, and have you spend some time with one of our counselors you can start to reach out to us now if you haven't already. You can create a case online um, at studentcentral.berkeley.edu and right on the landing page you'll find a link for creating a case or you can give us a call um, Monday through Friday 9 a.m. to noon or 1 to 4. We're at 510-664-9181. So thank you all for your time. I greatly appreciate spending time with you and know that we'll be available to answer your questions later today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for going through a ton of information in a short amount of time. Um, I know for a lot of you tuned in, whether you're with family or loved ones, this might stir up more questions. And that's good. That's what we want out of this. Um, remember, we'll have the live Q&A directly after this for you to submit questions. And we're really excited to share that EOP is partnering with Financial Aid and Scholarships Office to offer dedicated financial aid advising appointments to EOP students this upcoming Monday and Tuesday. So that's April 20th and 21st. We'll share out announcements of how to sign up um, at the end of this webinar, but just so you know, there's more help on the way to process some of this information. So it's okay if you're feeling overwhelmed. We hope to sort through it with you together. So now we are really excited to welcome a really great supporter and ally of EOP. Um, Dr. Pablo Gonzalez is going to share about his own journey navigating academia and UC Berkeley as a first-gen professor. For a lot of us, I know you've heard through some of our student speakers, just experiencing that imposter syndrome and the mixed range of emotions, right? You get the admissions offer and you're excited, but then it's also like, what's next? Am I really cut out for this? Am I smart enough? Can I do it? I heard Berkeley is so academically intense. Well, Dr. Gonzalez is gonna share some of his own reflections and offer some words of encouragement for you and all those tuned in. So without further ado, Dr. Pablo Gonzalez. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm Dr. Pablo Gonzalez, uh, continuing lecture in Chicano Studies and Ethnic Studies. 
Um, I'm a first generation Chicano from Berkeley and Richmond, California. And I wanted to speak to you all today about my educational path. I hope it resonates with you. For, um, and first, I want to congratulate you and your family on your recent successes. I know that we are living in difficult and uncertain times. Many of, many of us have families and loved ones who are impacted by COVID-19. And I know that you and your families have so many things on your mind. I'm confident that though we can, uh, I'm confident that, though that we can and will continue to imagine and build the types of worlds that everyone can fit in. It is not only your challenge, but our challenge to make those worlds livable for us and for future generations. Again, my hope is that my experiences will resonate with you and your communities. And then once you arrive to UC Berkeley, it will be a way to invite you to meet and build with me. First, a little bit about myself. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a first generation Chicano, the middle child of three from the East Bay area of Northern California. My grandparents and parents migrated to the United States in the mid 1960s from Macambaro, Guanajuato, Mexico. My grandfather was a former bracero agricultural guest worker who found factory work in the steel mills of the Bay Area. He brought my grandmother and their daughters to the Bay in order for them to have better ed educational opportunities. My mother would arrive to take some classes and receive her GED later in the 1970s. For most of her life, she worked in the sweatshops of the Bay Area as a seamstress. My father, on the other hand, arrived to the United States in the late 60s, first as an agricultural worker and eventually as a welder in the East Bay Area. I attended Berkeley schools and excelled at an early age. Yet, as I mentioned to many, I knew very little about the university. Can you imagine being raised in Berkeley and not really knowing about its most famous landmark, the University of California? Well, that was my reality. In fact, I had more family members working as janitors and service workers at UC Berkeley than as students. My older brother was the first to attend UC Berkeley and it was my first real experience with the university. The old Shattuck Avenue boundary for many Mexicans was slowly broken by my brother and cousins. I graduated from Berkeley High School and was fortunate to have people believe in me and offer me admissions to UC Davis through former EOP affirmative action programs. After my first year, I transferred to UC Berkeley where I gained my degree in Chicano studies. If you think imposter syndrome was something new, I reflect on my college experience in the mid 1990s, being the son of parents with questionable residency status, being brown, black, red, and many of us face the stigma of being perceived as unworthy due to our admissions as affirmative action students. I can still remember my former dorm roommates constantly telling me how I took the place of someone more worthy. I will tell you now that you were admitted not only on your accomplishments, but as a reflection of your family and community struggles and accomplishments. Much goes into getting you where you are and your ability to see yourself and others will help you transition to UC Berkeley. Never feel that you are alone. Many of us resonate with the sense of isolation and we have consejos or advice to cure it. One, being the first doesn't mean being the last. Pave the way for others. Acknowledge those that have come before and set your sights on new horizons. Two, doors may be shut, but those, are, those that are open are there for you to transgress. There are many thresholds that you will cross. Being a border crosser, being a border crosser is not a criminal act. It is an act of survival. It is an act of love. Cross the many borders you will face with confidence and humility. You will find lifelong companions and allies as you cross. Those doors that are closed, let's make sure they open. A campus like Berkeley will seem closed, but trust me, there are more of us than they are of them. Three, walk through Sproul, the halls of your dorms, the streets of Berkeley with your head held high. Acknowledge people. Don't be afraid to bump into people. We are in a moment of social distancing, and even though we take physical caution, we must never lose our sense of being convivial because that is an act of building community. Four, be open to new ideas, but be cautious of superficial analysis. You will be exposed to materials and ideas that you have never heard of before 
and that you will question. Good. Be a person who walks while asking. Be a person who seeks the resources to understand, and when they are not available, that demands that they be available to you and others. It will help you identify ways of understanding our lived realities and encounter those realities of others. Finally, as I pursued a PhD at the University of Texas at Austin, I knew I was the first. The first to pursue a graduate degree. The first to live outside of the Bay Area. The first to accomplish these aspirations. Many of you are the firsts. And although that comes with pressure, know that we expect mistakes. We expect the homesickness. We expect those calls to friends to see how they're doing. We expect those frequent trips home. We even expect you to doubt yourself. These doubts are all part of building and sustaining the most valuable resource you have at Cal, and that is community. I would not have finished my PhD or be at UC Berkeley without a community that listens to me, cares for me, and wants me to dream big. Although we are not physically able to meet with you today, I will conclude with the message I repeat to anyone and any group of student that I speak with. And that is that I make a commitment to you to have my door open for you to come and ask questions, to come and introduce yourself, to share who you are and who you are becoming, to gather tools to transform our world and to help build others. If you're not able to come by, then it is my task to accept your invitation to meet you where you feel safe. Thank you for your time and go Bears. That was absolutely powerful. Uh, so much love and abundance for you, Pablo. It's, uh, I'm over here ready to march, you know, in, inside of this space, because stay inside, stay safe. Uh, but thank you so much for being willing to be so giving with your personal story, with your academic story, and with the journey that you are experiencing. You are a family member, a friend, a role model for so many of us. And I, I want to encourage you all that are watching, whether you choose us, Berkeley, or another university, please prioritize getting to know your faculty. Visit them, ask them about their journey, ask them what motivated and, and inspired them to become professors, what were their challenges, what were their lessons, and make those connections so by the time that you graduate and leave, you leave not just with having professors that taught you, but professors that you befriended, befriended and are going to continue to have in your journey moving forward. Pablo is a perfect example of somebody that you want not just to be with for a quarter, for a semester, but really to be with you for the rest of the journey to provide the endless wisdom that they have. So thank you so much again. Um, Pablo, Dr. Gonzalez for being uh, with us. Now I want to transition us to our final student speaker. It is my great honor to check my mic and pass it over to Brother Orisi. You may have seen him in, I don't know, the international news, the national news, the state news, the local news. This brother has been everywhere and back. So we are so grateful that amidst his uh, busy schedule, being asked to be in a hundred places at once, he prioritized being here with us today. So Mike, check there and passing it over to Brother Arisa. Thank you for being here with us, brother. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, Ruth. Um, welcome, good Golden Bears, and well, hello, EOP family. First, I would like to say congratulations on your acceptance to Cal. I commend you for all your hard work that you have done. My name is Arisi and I'm a fifth year at UC Berkeley that is double majoring in anthropology and social welfare. My hometown is Sacramento, California. I am a proud son of immigrants. I grew up in low income neighborhoods and I'm a product of the public school system. Believe it or not, I had no idea what UC Berkeley was when applying to colleges. So y'all that are attending right now, you are truly doing your future selves a great advantage. I will not sugarcoat my path at Cal because I was like you, in fact, I think fondly if I was to tell my past self something about Cal, what would it be? And now through my journey of being at Cal, I have realized the most beneficial advice that I would give my past self would be that I would tell them the truth with love. And here's the truth. Cal will challenge you. It is hard, but it's not impossible. 
And here's the truth with love. Cal is hard, but nobody said that you have to do this alone. Love comes from community. And for me, that community came through the EOP and USP. I, am a, I came to Cal as a first generation low income student. And the fact that I am Pacific Islander, which is about 0.01% of the college campus, with other intersectional identities like being a DACA student, I initially felt alone because I would often pity myself with the thought that I'm a minority within minorities. I often hated my identities because I saw them as barriers rather than strengths, and I hated having to deal with Cal on top of it. But now looking back, I couldn't be more proud of all the identities that I have and that make up who I am and that continues to shape me. The question here then becomes, how did you get there? Allow me to share some words of wisdom that has really shaped me to becoming the person that I am today. First, your health is your wealth. And remember that you can always ask for help. Like Ruben said, students' basic needs are so important. And I learned that there are different ways to support your health, which can range from physical, mental, emotional, and others. I'll be honest with you, my freshman year, I gained the freshman 50, not 15, I gained 50 pounds. I was under a lot of stress for school and I felt completely lost because I had no blood family close by. This led to constant insecurities in my life and led me down to a dark path. It wasn't until the end of my sophomore year that I realized after a near death experience at 350 pounds that I, that about how important my health is. I went to the EOP and USP office and I spoke to my academic counselor. And it was through this that I was able to get the resources needed to be successful in Cal because I chose to take that step and put my health as a priority by asking for help. I have now lost 100 pounds since then and I'm doing well in my classes because I prioritize my health because my health is my wealth. Second, do not compare yourself to others. Focus on your own journey and run your own race. When coming onto this campus, I felt like I didn't belong on this college campus and that any moment UC Berkeley would contact me saying that my decision of admittance was a mistake. Some may call this the imposter syndrome. My first day at Cal, I was struck by this thought and feeling. I remember being a Cal, at Cal student orientation at Wheeler Hall in the biggest auditorium that was packed with students. I remember one of the student orientation leaders asking the audience to raise their hand if they were the valedictorian of their school. Man, the shock on my face when I realized the amount of hands that raised up all around me. And I remember that I totally felt lost because I couldn't relate to any of them. This feeling did not end. In fact, I remember being in classes and struggling to understand the concepts from lectures while some of my peers seemed to grasp the concepts so quickly. I recall many nights studying and often struggling with this thought that maybe I would was not meant to be at Cal. Maybe higher education wasn't meant for me, and maybe I should just quit. And real talk, you will have these moments in college and even throughout life, no matter what you may pursue. But let me give you advice to deal with this imposter syndrome. You ready? Here it is. You are more than enough, and you are here for a reason. Everyone has their own journey in life, so do not compare yourself with someone else because they have their own destination in life, and you do too. The best thing you could do for yourself is to focus on your own journey, or some may call it run your, run your own race. Lastly, you do not have to do this journey alone. And I cannot emphasize how important community is, especially the EOP and USB community. For me, this community was my home away from home, my community hospital, and my personal coaches that helped me through my academic journey and all the journeys that I still face today. In fact, I'll let you know that my first week at Cal, I did not know how to use the washing, mach washing machines at the dorm rooms. They would not accept my quarters and I had no idea how to add money into my account. That day, I met with the EOP peer advisor and they walked back with me to the laundry machine at the dorms and taught me how to use it. Real talk, who would do this? I'll tell you, that's a community member. That's what we call family. And I cannot tell you the amount of love that I was met with every time that I came to the EOP and USP offices, even sometimes bawling my eyes out, whether it was facing a family crisis like losing a loved one, financial aid help, figuring out what classes to enroll into, or whatever it may be. My EOP and USP community has been there through the thick and thin during my journey to higher education. And now as someone that has been benefited 
that has benefited from this kind of love. I want to use this opportunity to help those of you that are about to start your journey at Cal. You might feel like you are alone, but you're not. You have a family here ready to help you, support you, and equip you to not just survive, but to thrive at Cal. So let me remind you with this truth with love. Cal is hard, but the community like UFP and USP, it is well worth it. Good luck to you as you finish your year from home. We look forward to seeing you when you arrive on campus. Stay healthy, stay safe, good luck, and go Bears. Thank you. All the feels, all the feels and all the inspirations going on over here, brother. We see so much love for you. Um, thank you for being one of the brightest lights uh, on campus for us for since you got here, to be honest. I appreciate you. Well, fam, we have reached this point of our quality time with each other. I want to make sure that you all uh, feel everything that has happened up to this point. You have been welcomed by your co-host. Shout out to the most phenomenal co-host, uh, Yuki who has been making just the most beautiful expressions as every speaker has been offering just all of the wisdom and magic. I hope y'all been seeing some of those real time reactions. I'm that so emotional, Ruben. I'm so, so, so beautiful. The me. so courageous with your stories with your willingness to be here in community thank you sylvia thank you brie thank you lily thank you uh pablo for being here with everybody it means everything that we came together during this pandemic and really committed ourselves to making sure that all of the fam that are watching are having this experience of love and community you know it's so hard when you get into when you get into colleges you think about it as these like abstract things and they get dehumanized really quickly. So for it was important for y'all to feel this community, to see all of these beautiful faces, if you have the gift of sight, if you don't, to hear us, to feel us, to experience us, so that you know that you're coming into a place that is so excited to have you, so grateful to have you with us, and you're gonna be surrounded by the abundance of community and family. You are going to be uh, transitioned into a live Q&A with us that I am so excited for all of your questions, uh, you know, feel free to have your family with you or kick them out of the room that you are in as long as your life will not be threatened. I know that I would never be to kick my mom out of a moment like this. So shout out to the moms, shout out to the dad, shout out to all the fam that is with you. And if you're alone, shout out to you. Thank you for being alone with us and you're never alone because we got you. So with that, I'll check my mic by saying thank you to everybody that is here and I'll pass it over to Sister Yuki. Thank you so much, Ruben, for summing us up. Um, I know for so many of you, you're sitting on your couch, on your bed, in your living room, and you're just processing all of this information, right? I think there were so many threads of love and support and just mutual understanding that we're all in this from the same starting points. Um, and we really just want you to know that we're for real, y'all. We did not, we didn't say any, any of this out of vain that we really do welcome the questions. We welcome your curiosities. We welcome the nerves. Um, EOP is a really great starting point. And I think for so many of us as first-gen low-income folks, we don't know where to start sometimes. You don't know what you don't know. And then you get there and once you figure it out, you feel embarrassed. Like, why didn't I know what that acronym was? Or how come I didn't understand how to navigate the Cal Central portal? Um, but we really wanna make sure that you know that we're walking alongside you in this journey. Um, and like Arisi mentioned, you all have this head start now. We are reaching out to y'all months in advance so that hopefully you know about us, that hopefully after you go through Golden Bear Advising, we connect one-on-one -on -one and through our orientation and that you know that you have a village to support you not just in your first year or your first semester, but through and beyond your time at Cal. So we also want to close in highlighting some important updates and announcements for y'all. So like Ruben mentioned, directly after this, we're having a live Q&A at 11.30 a.m. Um, it's super important for y'all to know it's a separate link for you to view it. So if you go to our welcome web, web, welcome web page, so it's just new admin virtual welcome. If you go there, there will be a button for you to click to view the YouTube live webinar. Okay, so directly after this, log off, click that link on our website and start texting in your questions on the number that will show. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're partnering with our great friends at Financial Aid to offer dedicated advising appointments specifically for EOP and USP students. So we want to help you understand your portal. We want to teach you about how to apply for scholarships, how to maximize grants and resources, and that'll be April 20th and 21st, so the Monday and Tuesday. And that link will be posted on that same welcome page um, today, Saturday, April 18th at 3 p.m. So log on, we only have a limited amount of appointments and it's really just first come, first serve. Finally, we really wanna get your feedback, y'all. So this was our one of our first times doing a virtual webinar of this sort. Um, like we said, we hope to welcome you in person, but we wanted to make sure that you had faces and names to connect with in the fall and spring. So please fill out our webinar evaluation. We want your honest and real feedback, y'all. Um, it's tinyurl.com slash EOP webinar, and we'll be selecting um, gift winners to win a raffle card. So if you submit it, you have a chance to win an Amazon gift card. Um, and we'll also be doing some raffles during our live Q&A as well. So again, I know this was a lot of information in a short amount of time, but more than anything, we hope that you have experienced somewhat the feel of EOP and knowing that as much as you have, you know, excitements about, you know, Berkeley picked me and can I really do this? Know that we are just as honored if you consider picking us, right? Like Ruben mentioned in the beginning, we're not here to convince you or sell you on UC Berkeley. We just want you to have all the information, all the resources for you and your loved ones to make an informed decision, a decision from a place of love and abundance and not fear, and to know that you have a whole community ready to welcome you with open arms, right? I know Berkeley can feel like an intimidating place and a challenging place, and like our student speakers spoke to, right, there are challenges. It, it can be difficult at times, but know that you don't have to navigate it on your own. And know that you were selected because you are more than prepared, more than qualified to reach those new heights and reach those new challenges and become a better version of yourself through the UC Berkeley experience. So with that said, I'm going to invite all of our guest speakers to join us back on camera so that we can do one last goodbye in true Berkeley tradition. Um, so I'll count us off with a final Go Bears. One, two, three, go! Bears! Bears! Go! Bears! Go! Bears! Go! Bears! Bears! I promise y'all it's so much better in person. So we the hope Zoom to version. you in the fall so we can all do that together. So sending y'all so much love during these times. Stay safe. Stay in community and know that EOP has your back. Love y'all. Go Bears. See y'all. Bears. Bye. Bye.